Okay, here we're going to look at basic classification of bones within our skeletal system. Notice there's many different types of bones, many different types of functions. Uh, some are very easily named, like flat bone and short bone and long bone. Some have a very irregular shape, and they get the term irregular bone. But each is able to perform a unique function as part of our entire skeletal system. So again, it's the shape is how we're going to classify them, and that shape will relate to where they're located in the body and the function that they perform within that particular location. So classification of bones, I'll start with the long bones. They're typically longer than they are wide, and that's how they get the name long bones. Highlighted in red here in our slowly rotating skeleton allows you to identify some of the regions you can find these long bones. They have a shaft with heads at both ends. Now, the heads at both ends might be different, uh, but it is a head region at both ends. They contain mostly compact bone, and examples would be the femur and the humerus. Keep in mind the humerus is located in the upper arm here, would be the humerus here, and corresponding and very similarly looking in the general sense, down here would be where the femur would be located. So remember our humerus up here, and femur down here. And we see a lot of similarities between these two long bones. The head regions, though, are different between the two, and it has to result with the joints that each attaches to. So we're going to be identifying some of the bones in our body. We should be very familiar with where the humerus and where the femur is located, despite them looking very similar. So structural long bones, they consist of a diaphysis and an epiphysis. The diaphysis is a tubular shaft that forms the axis of the long bones. We see that here, diaphysis in the long portion of the long bones. It's composed of compact bone, it surrounds its medullar cavity, and yellow bone marrow fat is contained within this cavity. Unless we're talking about a very, very young individual, basically an infant, this medullar cavity would be composed of mostly red bone marrow. But keep in mind, as we age, that red bone marrow becomes replaced with yellow bone marrow, which is mostly fat. The epiphysis, the epiphysis uh, expands uh, ends of the long bone. That's referring to the basically the head regions. It's also exterior is composed of that compact bone. In the interior, which is majority, is that spongy bone, as you see here. The reason why it's spongy bone, it's covered with uh, hyaline cartilage. And this line here it, it is where the different regions uh, meet essentially something called a, this middle region not going to get too much into that the key part is to understand that the yellow bone marrow we see indicated here is typically found in the diaphysis region the epiphyseal line is the separation between the two the reason why there's mostly spongy bone here is simply because this is what's allowing for that red bone marrow to be housed and protected now, the bones, we also have long bones. Now we have our short bones. You can see where they're, where they're located, highlighted on our slowly rotating skeleton up here. Generally, they're cube-shaped, kind of cube-like, we'll say, and they contain mostly spongy bone. They're found in the carpals and tarsals. So carpals are in our hand, you see here, and tarsals are located in the foot region. Also, the patella, or kneecap, is classified as a short bone. Flat bones are thin and flattened, usually curved. Uh, it helps give them some strength. And there are thin layers of compact bone around a layer of spongy bone. Our skull, our ribs, our sternum, as well our hips are also considered or fall under the classification of flat bones. Again, the reason why they tend to be a little bit curved is that it gives them a little bit more um, structural integrity. Well, lastly, our irregular bones. These have an irregular shape. That's how they get their name. They really don't fit into any other bone classification categories. They're kind of the odd ones of the, of the group here. And the vertebral column would be a prime example of that. They're not long bones. They're not sharp bones. They're irregularly shaped. Um, it's more than just a vertebral column. Some portions of the hip also. Um, some also of the um, head region can be classified as irregular bones. Hopefully this gives you just that basic overview of some of the classifications of bones by their individual and unique shapes.